Okay, we can go ahead and get started today then. Just to catch up, a quick catch up of where we finished uh, last time. We finished the first part of the uh, ME312 course, which was pipes in series and parallel and branching pipes. And then we considered pumps, um, the operating point of a pump in a system. Then we considered um, series and parallel pumps. We looked at manufacturer's curves. We drew the uh, system curve. The intersection point was the operating point. We looked at the efficiency, the specific speed. Um, we covered pumps pretty completely. Okay, now we jump to a different chapter, a different topic. This topic is titled Dimensional Analysis and Similitude. So, <clears throat> It's a real important topic uh, for us. We, we start out and kind of describe why it's important. Okay. We want to run the test on uh, a smooth cylinder. So here's a cylinder of diameter D. It's smooth surface. We, we could put this in a wind tunnel and attach it to some kind of a rod to measure the drag force. There's a drag force on it because a fluid is moving towards the cylinder at a velocity v. The properties of the fluid are density, rho, and viscosity mu. So if somebody said to you, what do you think the drag force depends on in a situation like that? Well, I think most people would say, I think it depends on how big the cylinder is. And that's, a good, that's a good guess. Sure, it depends on the diameter of the cylinder. If it's the size of a BB, or is it one foot in diameter? Of course, the one foot diameter has a bigger drag force than the BB does with the same velocity, the same fluid. Uh, so, all right, so it's a function of the uh, diameter. Uh, I think it's a function of the velocity because the faster the fluid moves, I think more drag force. Hold your hand outside the car window, 10 miles an hour and then 65 miles an hour. Oh, wow, big difference. Drag force increases as velocity, so yep. I think the drag force depends on velocity. Uh, look at the drag force maybe with air and then maybe with um, new engine oil. Oh my gosh, the drag force on engine oil passing that cylinder, that's going to be big compared to the drag force air passing over the cylinder. So I think it depends on the density and the viscosity. Okay, rho and mu. So there's five variables, F, D, velocity, V, diameter, D, density, rho, viscosity, mu. Uh, and then you're working for this company and the boss says, okay, I, I want you to go out to the lab and I want you to run some tests on this. I want you to come back with some data on the drag force for different kinds of fluids, for air, for water, for oil. I want you to run it for different diameter cylinders, from small to big, whatever that might be. I want you to run it for different velocities, from low to high. I don't want it to be so high we have compressibility effects, like Mach number, no. So run it out at reasonably low velocities. Um, and come back with, uh, with, with your results. And so uh, what you might do then, say, okay, you go out in the lab, You've got a wind tunnel available, and you've got a technician, and you set it up, and you get the data from the lab. You crank up the wind tunnel velocity V. The fluids might be air, probably air. Um, put, the, put the cylinder in there, and then uh, get a curve. Your data, you say, I'm going to plot my data as a drag force on the uh, y-axis. Uh, versus I'm going to plot it with diameter. And then I'm going to take different velocities. So this is for a low velocity V1, higher velocity, higher velocity, higher velocity. So all the way out to whatever, that would be V4, but 
you can take 10 different velocities. So you, you change the diameter of the cylinder. Um, you crank the velocity up in the wind tunnel and you measure the drag force. So you're gonna have data points that look like this. Maybe 10 different diameters, maybe 10 different velocities. So you have your junior engineer go out there and plot the data for you on Excel and then bring it back to you. And you say, you know what, that was air at um, ambient temperature and pressure. I'm gonna increase the, the, the temperature so I get a different density or I get a different viscosity. So you go ahead and you, this was at one value of um, rho one mu one. And then you run it down here at different values. And again, you're gonna plot, there'll be a number of different curves, FD over D. Uh, this one might be for, uh, I'm gonna run it at 10 different of the uh, densities. And this is mu one. And then I'm gonna run this one over here and I'm gonna plot FD here versus D here. And uh, this one might look like this. And this one is going to be um, row one mu 10. And finally, I'm gonna plot this one here, FD versus um, D for different velocities again, V1 and so on. And this one's for rho 10, mu 10. So you run it at 10 different velocities, 10 different diameters, 10 different viscosities, 10 different densities. There'll be 10 graphs here, each one a different density. There'll be 10 graphs across here, each one a different viscosity. When you're done, there'll be 100 graphs. 10 by 10, 100 graphs. So you took all that data in the lab, um, just as an estimate. Let's just say that um, each test takes a half an hour. You work eight hours a day. Okay, two and a half years. Okay, two and a half years. So you got 100 graphs here, two and a half years later. You're done. You come back to your boss and you say, okay, boss, I'm sorry I'm late two and a half years from, since I saw you last, um, but I know you're gonna be proud of me because um, what you told me to do, I've done it. And I got the results for you. Here they are, 100 graphs. You can thank me later, okay? But I think I did a pretty good job. And the boss says, well, d d did you do air at ambient temperature and pressure for a six inch diameter sphere and um, 40 feet per second. He says, yeah, I think I got that here somewhere. Yeah, right here, here it is right here. And then he says, well, um, did you do it for water at five feet per second with a diameter of uh, 12 inches? He say, no, but I did it for a diameter of two feet. He says, oh, oh okay, two feet rather than one feet, okay. He says, wow, that's interesting. He said, you know, he said, um, he said, you didn't notice at the time, but I gave Bill over there, who came to our company at the same time as you did, I gave the same assignment to Bill, and um, he came back in after um, two days, Now I haven't seen you in two and a half years. He came back in two days, and on my desk, you won't believe this, on my desk he put a single sheet of paper and said, boss, I'm back. I said, you're back already? He said, yeah, there it is. And I said to him, I said, you know, is that good for water at ambient conditions? Six inch diameter, a velocity of 40 feet per second? He says, yeah, it's on there. Is that good for um, oil at a temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit at a velocity of uh, five feet per second? Yeah, it's right here. Boss, everything is right here. Give me a diameter, it's here. Give me a fluid, it's here. Give me a velocity. It's here. The guy said, wow, how do you do that? He said, I'm, I'm a graduate of mechanical engineering at Cal Poly Pomona, and I have Professor Biddle. Thank you very much. I'll take my <laughs> bow later. Thank you. And this guy with 100 sheets of paper, says, he says, well, how about you? Where'd you graduate from? He said, oh, Cal State Death Valley. 
Um, I'm, that's a makeup, okay? Um, no, too bad you didn't have Professor Biddle. Okay, well, you didn't learn that then, did you? All right. Well, hey, that's a big deal. 100 sheets of paper, and everything's not covered on there. Everything's not covered on there. One sheet of paper? <laughs> everything's covered on there. This guy with one sheet of paper, all he did was go over here in the wind tunnel. Okay. Okay. So he plotted on special coordinates. So he plotted it. Let's plot it on, this is called the drag coefficient. Um, drag coefficient. And you've heard of that. The drag coefficient on your car, blah, blah, blah. You know, that drag coefficient is defined as FD divided by rho V squared D squared. And you know the Reynolds number. Rho V D over mu. So he plotted a drag coefficient over rho v squared d squared, and he plotted the Reynolds number down here. Then he plotted the results for air at ambient conditions at a velocity of 10 feet per second with a diameter of 2 feet. And he got data points like this. Then he changed the velocity to uh, 15 feet per second. And he got points like this. He didn't get a separate curve for every velocity. Uh-uh. Then he changed the velocity to 25 feet per second, and he got data points like this. Then he said, wow, that's really interesting. Maybe I'll change the diameter now. I'll double the diameter. OK, double the diameter. Now you get data points like this. Say, oh my gosh, no matter how I change the velocity, no matter how I change the diameter, all the points seem to fall on a single line. I think I've discovered something here. Yeah, you sure did. One sheet of paper works for any velocity, okay, incompressible, for any diameter, for any fluid. Wow, you don't need a hundred or a thousand graphs. One graph covers everything. So he went out there, put that cylinder in the wind tunnel, changed the velocity five or six times, drew one curve. Is that curve good for water now? Yeah. Oil, uh-huh. Ethylene glycol, yes. Any diameter, yes. Wow, did you just discover something? Did you really, that's impressive. Okay, that's the power of dimensional analysis. If you don't know that, you would do it this way, which is a waste of valuable time and, and money. Technician's time, laboratory space, secretary's job, whatever. Yeah, tons of money in the lab, expensive stuff in the lab. So if you can reduce the amount of data you take and present something like this, boy, you've just discovered something very, very valuable. Of course now, the whole crux of the matter is, if you can't find these important dimensionless parameters, then it's not going to work like that. So the key is, how do you find those important dimensionless parameters? They're dimensionless parameters. OK, well, that's what we're going to do. Find out what's important. So here's how we do it. I'm going to erase this, and we'll see how we do it. Now, our textbook does it a couple ways. Um, you can read it, but we're going to focus only on one of the ways to do this. It's called the Pi Theorem, officially the Buckingham Pi Theorem. It's a way to identify the important dimensionless parameters in a problem. So when you go into the laboratory and perform a laboratory analysis, you get a big, big hint of how you want to present the data graphically. That's what it does for you. OK, so I'm going to go through the um, rules on that. And let's just start out. And we, we've done the first steps right here. OK, step number one, uh, 
select pertinent variables. Okay, I'm going to study the drag force on a cylinder. I think the important variables are going to be the drag force, of course. The velocity of the fluid, sure. The density, yeah. The viscosity, okay. The diameter, yeah, okay. I've identified them. One, two, three, four, five. There are any of those. Five variables. Number two, write the functional relation. Function means something is a function of something. Here it is. Something, the drag force, is equal to a function of something else. What's a something else? D, V, rho, mu. This is the functional relationship. Equal sign. F stands for function. F stands for function. Okay, now step three. Select repeating variables. We'll find out why they're called repeating variables in just a minute. For right now, we call them repeating variables. Um, under this, don't select a dependent variable. Uh, B. Substep If there's a dimensionless variable in this list, don't select it as a repeating variable. That's, okay, I'll get to four. Pi parameter, well, for one thing, pi is a dimensionless number, of course, so. That's kind of where it comes from of sorts. They're just called pi parameters because they're, they're really dim important dimensionless parameters. Okay, let's see, got that number of pi parameters. Uh, R N minus M. Okay. Okay, that's step four. Let's do step five. Write the pi terms. By combining the repeating variables. And we'll go through these in the example real careful in just a minute.
And when you're done, what you want to end up with is some kind of functional relationship between the pi parameters. Let me just show you over here. This is where we started. Where we ended when we're done is the drag force coefficient, F sub d over rho v squared d squared equals some function of rho v d over mu. This is, this is step seven. Where did we start? The drag force was a function of four different variables. Where do we end up? The drag coefficient is only a function of one variable. We've simplified life dramatically. How do we do that? We did this pi theorem and found out what are the important dimensionless, vari dimensionless variables in this problem. And we said, we found out one of them is a Reynolds number. We kind of knew that. The other one's a drag uh, coefficient. Drag coefficient. Okay, so let's start. We did this. We said, what did we say? We said, we both together kind of in a way. We said, we think the drag force on a, a smooth cylinder is going to be a function of the velocity, the diameter, the density, and the viscosity. Okay, that's step, that's step by one and two. Now we're going to select what's called the repeating variables. Okay, here's what you don't want to select. Don't select the dependent variable. This guy on the left-hand side is the dependent variable. Do not choose him. By the way, how many do uh, we need? Okay, we're going to need n minus m. Okay, so in this case, one, two, three, four, five. N equal five. I'm gonna list all these guys right here. In your textbook, table five one. You can you could do it yourself. You don't need table five one, but that's okay. He put it in the book, so use it. Okay, I'm gonna ask myself, what is uh, now we use what's the MLT system, mass, length, time. The other system has force in there. No, we're not gonna use that one. Using the MLT system. All right, so then say. What is the dimensions of diameter? Um, length, L, over there. So diameter D has length L. We use the brackets to tell what the dimensions are. Let's get velocity. Velocity, you know what it is, meters per second. It's length over time. L over T. Density. You know what it is. Mass over volume. What's volume? Length cubed. Kilograms per cubic meter. Mass over volume. What's volume? Length cubed. Got it. Viscosity. Oh, you can work it out from Newton's law of viscosity. But you don't have to. It's over here in the table. 5, 1, m over lt. And finally, we have our drag force. You can do it yourself. Newton's law, force equal m times a, mass times acceleration. What's mass? m, what's acceleration? Meters per second squared, you got it. ML over T squared. Now, you ask yourself, in that list of five variables, how many of the basic dimensions M, L, and T do I see? Do I see an L? Yes, I do. Do I see a T? Yes, I do. Do I see an M? Yes, I do. M then, M. Okay. How many were there? Three, mass, length, and time. So first step then is the number of pi's that would characterize this problem is n minus m, five minus three, two. There are two important dimensionless parameters which will characterize this problem. 
Okay, we're that far now. Now we have to find them. We're kind of mixing these up a little bit. We'll, we'll find them now. All right, I'm going to select repeating variables. I'll put that over here. Okay, variables. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's put up um, here. Don't. I told you before. Don't select that guy. Okay, keep going. Variables should contain all dimensions and don't select any dimensionless variables. There's no dimensionless variable there. No dimensionless variable. Okay, so forget that two, three C. Okay, I'm going to choose three from what's remaining. There they are over there. D, V, Rho, Mu. Select three. Okay, let's see what I chose. Um, I chose rho v and d. Okay, rho v d. Okay, so like repeat. Rho v and d. Okay, now I ask myself. Here's here's make sure. This is what you ask yourself. In those three, I'll put a check mark by him. Do you see l at least one time? Yes, I do. L l l. I see l three times. Do you see t at least one time? Yes, I do. T one time. Do I see mass at least one time? Yes, I do, mass. Good. They contain M, L, and T. Okay. Got it. Now, let's go on to step five. Write the pi terms. All right, here's how we do it. Pi one is equal to rho to the A Make sure I got these in the right order, otherwise my, they'll be, no, it's rho, yeah, rho to the A, V to the B, D to the C. Okay, now I'm going to do pi 2. Pi 2 equal rho to the A, V to the B, D to the C. Now that's why they're called repeating, because I take these same three variables, rho, v, and d, and I repeat them for each pi parameter, raised to a power, a power a, a power b, a power c. This will be a different a, a different a, a different b, a different c. I'm not done yet, though. With each of the remaining variables tacked on the end. OK, I said, what, what's remaining? I use rho, v, d. What's remaining? Mu. Did I put mu with him just to make sure? No, I did it opposite. I put the drag force with him. He goes on that one. What else didn't I use? Mu. He goes over here. Got it. OK, that's how you set the equations up in step five. You list the repeating variables raised to a power, a, b, and c, for instance, and then tack on another variable here, different variable in each one of the terms. So for pi 1, I chose FD. For pi 2, I chose mu. OK, now we do step 6. Solve them. OK, here's how we solve them. What's the dimensions of rho? Right here. M over L cubed. To what power? A. Velocity. L over T. To what power? B. Diameter. Length. To what power? C. Drag force. M. L over T squared. Over here. Rho to the A. Velocity. L over T to the B. Diameter is a length to the C and mu, m over lt. Now, I rewrite this guy. m to the a plus 1. l to the minus 3a plus b plus c plus 1 t to the minus b minus 2. Got it. 
algebra now. Now we're doing algebra. Okay, now, these pi parameters are dimensionless parameters. They're dimensionless, which means, what do you think the power is on the mass? Well, it better be zero. What's the power on the length? Well, it better be zero. What's the power on the time t? Well, it better be zero, or it's not going to be dimensionless. So here's my algebra. A plus 1 equals 0, minus B minus 2 equals 0, <coughs> minus 3A plus B plus C plus 1 equals 0. This guy A equal minus 1. This guy B equal minus 2. This guy solve for C, C comes out to be minus 2. So what's pi 1? Go back to the very top again and put the values of A, B, and C back in here. Rho to the A, V to the B, D to the C, times f d. So pi 1 is equal to f sub d rho v squared d squared. Is it dimensionless? You can check it. You can prove it. Put the dimensions in over here. Oh, I'll just go through it. f sub d ml over t squared. Because you always want to check it when you're done. Although you, you'll know if you're right or not. You'll know if you made some mistake on, on the algebra here. Rho, m over L cubed. Velocity squared, L squared over T squared. Diameter squared, L squared. L to the fourth, L to the fourth cancels out. Mass cancels out. Time squared cancels out. Yep, it's dimensionless. You always want to check it to make sure you didn't make a silly mistake in your algebra. Okay, now we go over here to pi two. Same game m to the a plus 1, l minus 3a plus b plus c minus 1, t to the minus b minus 1. Okay, um, let's see, we got the c in there, yeah, we got c in there, so we have um, our a plus 1 equals 0, minus b minus 1 equals 0, minus 3a plus b plus c minus 1 equals 0, gives our a equal minus 1, um, it gives our b equal minus 1, and it gives our c equal minus 1. So that means our pi 2 is equal to mu over rho v d. Oh, that's just the reciprocal of the Reynolds number. It's 1 over the Reynolds number. I know that's dimensionless. OK. So now we found the two important dimensionless parameters. So when I go in the laboratory now, and I take data on a smooth cylinder in a wind tunnel to get the drag force. How do I plot my data? I plot it pi 1 versus pi 2. And when I plot my data, what do I get? I don't care what the diameter is. I don't care what the velocity is. All my data falls on a single line. Why? because I found out the important dimensionless parameters of this problem. If I hadn't found those, then I'd be plotting hundreds of sheets of graph paper to present the data. No, you don't want to do that. You want to do it with a little bit of thought beforehand. And the thought is, what are the important dimensionless parameters? It, this, this works most of the time. There are some special cases where this wouldn't work, 
then you do it another way. But this way works a lot, okay? All right, so any questions on that before we go on? Yes, sir. Uh, when would your M not be equal to five or? Yeah, yeah, the M, it, if you're, some of you are in my heat transfer class. If you put a temperature difference theta in there, T minus, let's say, T something else, then you got temperature. So now there's four. But in our class, this is fluids, there's only, there's only three, okay, ML and T. Which one now? Here? No, no, just, just in Here? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Now, why did I pick those? Yeah. No, no, like when would you not? Okay. Those, Got it. Mm hmm. Um, I'm glad you reminded me. Okay. I don't need this anymore. Because nobody's going to tell you what to pick. I mean, it's, you got to pick them out yourself. Um, which one can't you pick out? Shouldn't you pick out that one? There's four. Pick out three. I picked rho VD. What if I picked V rho mu? What if I picked D rho mu? You see, there's many choices for the repeating variables. So I said, now let's select V, D, and mu as repeating. Okay, pi one equal V to the A, D to the B, mu to the C, pi two equal, repeating, V to the A, D to the B, mu to the C. Now add one thing on here, FD. Now add one thing on here, rho. Because now I'm selecting V, D, and mu. So now I put rho on one at the end, there. I put FD on the end of the other one, right there, not to a power, just like that. And now I solve for A, B, and C. I'm not gonna go through it again, but I'll tell you what the answer is. If you do, pi one um, comes out to be, that's the drag force, FD over mu VD. FD over mu VD. Pi two uh, comes out to be rho, uh, this is uh, mu or rho VD. Okay, oh, it's, no, I'm sorry, it's rho VD or mu. It's the real Reynolds number. Okay, so now this one says, all right, uh, pi one is a different function of pi two. Is that valid? Of course it is. You want to plot your data on this graph? Then you plot FD over mu VD, and down here you plot rho VD over mu, and you get a single line, just like that one. It'll be a different line because it's a different function, but it'll be a single line, that's the important thing. So conclusion, I don't care what you pick as repeating variables, you're gonna get two pi parameters, and you can plot your data on either one of those two graphs you want, or other ones too, there's other ones. So why do we plot it on this graph over here? Because this is given a special name by engineers called the drag coefficient, that's why. This is not a special name. It's a no name. Here's an important thing in engineering called the drag coefficient. So we say, let's plot our data as a drag coefficient on the y-axis, okay. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm going to, this shape wouldn't be correct, but I'll just show you here. Um, this is uh, mu over rho VD, and this one was FD over rho v squared d squared. Um, y 
you can raise these guys to any power you want. It wouldn't matter. If you don't like if you don't like this guy, his answer, oh here he's over here, okay. If you don't like that answer down there, that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna select pi one as F D squared over rho squared rho squared B B to the fourth D to the fourth. I squared him. And if you don't like that mu over rho VD, all you do is say, well, pi 2 is uh, rho VD over mu. Now, it doesn't matter. You, you, can, you can square them. You can take their reciprocal. You can raise them to any power you want. If they're dimensionless, guess what? If something's dimensionless and you square it, it's still dimensionless. If something's dimensionless, you take the square root, it's still dimensionless. Doesn't matter. So if I don't like, if I don't like this guy, say, oh gee, that's not the Reynolds number there. I don't care, take the reciprocal. Now pi 2 is rho v d divided by mu. You can do that to any of these pi's that you got. You can raise them to powers because they're dimensionless. You say, but yeah, um, these guys here, are they related to those guys over there? Well, let's figure it out. Let's call this one over here, call this one, we can do right here, uh, pi, call this guy pi one old, we did him first. Call this one pi two old. We just did these guys, I showed you up here. Call this guy pi one new, call this guy pi two new. Let's see if we can get how we get pi two new. <coughs> pi one old, or pi two old, that's him, raised to the minus one power. Yep, that's all I did. Now let's take pi one new. That's uh, him over here. Okay, pi one new right here. Okay, uh, get rid of all this junk in here. Okay, rho v squared d squared. Okay, pi one new equal. Let's take pi one old. raises some power and I'm going to take uh, pi 2 old over there, pi 2 old. Let me, let me play with this. What's pi 1 old? F D over rho V squared D squared. Okay, what's pi 2 old? Mu over rho VD, okay. Um, I'm trying to get pi one new, okay, right here, pi one new. Okay, um, what if I raise him to the minus one? Um, uh, let's see, pi one, oh, pi one new, yeah, minus one. That would uh, get rid of the rho. Oh, there's a row in there. Nope, don't want to do that. Leave the row in there. Okay. So we've got the F. I didn't want the F D squared. We've got the F D, row B squared, D squared. Okay. That's not right. Uh, da, 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 da. What was our pi one new? Here it was. Row mu V D. Mu V D, pi one, right here. There it is right there. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. He's from over there. Okay. I want a mu in the denominator. Okay, there's a mu in the numerator. Okay, minus one. That's gonna be FD over rho V squared D squared multiplied by mu over rho, oh, flip flop it. Mu over rho VD. Okay, got it. 
cancels, 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 cancels. This is equal to FD over mu VD. Let's see now, FD. Yep, there it is. So all I do is I raise this guy to the first power and I raise that guy to the minus one power. These are the old guys. Combine them together with the right power, power one, power minus one. And what do I get? I get pi one nu, which means you can always relate them back together if you want to by doing this little power law thing here. Pi one nu, now I can do the same thing, okay? Pi two nu equal pi two old, okay? Times pi one. This was, was to the minus one we said, okay? And uh, we had uh, pi one old. Pi one old is that guy. I don't want FD in there, power zero. There it is. You, you multiply the old pi parameters together, raised to a power, and you can come up with the new pi, pi one and pi two. So they're all, they're all okay, they're all okay. Nobody's right, nobody's wrong with how you select the repeating variables. The answers you get will all be dimensionless parameters and they'll all be okay to plot your data, except usually we engineers like one over the other. We like to plot the drag coefficient versus the Reynolds number. You don't like him? That's okay, flip flop him. Take the reciprocal, rho V D divided by mu, which we like because that's the Reynolds number. Okay, so yeah. You can, you can change the repeating variables, get a new set of repeating variables, and uh, it's fine. It'll work out fine. Okay, now, let's take another case. Okay. Um, sometimes, sometimes, oh, I sh okay, that's okay. Let's say this, this sphere is not smooth. Let's say it's rough drag force, some function of um, V, D, rho, mu, ooh, surface roughness, surface roughness, E. Okay, now, here we go again. How many variables? There are six. How many dimensions? There'll be three, you can check it. How many pi parameters? There'll be three. Okay, now you gotta find them. You can do it the same way we just did it. Choose repeating variables, I don't know. V, D, rho, that's fine. Don't choose F, D again. So, um, there's our list. Let's add one over here now. Epsilon, surface roughness, length L, got it. Do by observation. Okay, this way here you can do it. Sometimes you don't even need to use the pi theorem. You can just look at them and figure them out yourself. Okay. You know what, I think if I divide, I guess I call it E, if I divide surface roughness by diameter, that's gonna be dimensionless. You got it. Okay, I know one pi parameter. E over D. Length over length. Got it, dimensionless. I didn't need the pi theorem. How many do I need? I need three, I need two more. No, wait, okay, that's, that's right. When you do that, here's what you do. When you do that, you um, knock one of those two guys out of that list. Okay, I used E and D, let's see what I knocked out. I knocked out E. I said, I'm gonna knock that guy out, he's gone. Can't use him again, I can't use him right now. No, he's gone. 
Okay, uh, let's find another pi parameter. Okay, pi uh, two. You say, you know what? Here's a row V D divided by mu. It's got to be the Reynolds number. It's dimensionless, of course. Rho V D divided by mu, Reynolds number. Is it dimensionless? Of course it is, we know that. Okay, we got two of the three now. Say, okay, I got a knockout. Now, I got one other pi parameter, pi two. Knock out one of those variables from this list. I knocked out mu. Okay. All right. So, now we have these guys. Pi three. Pi three. Um... I know I've got to have the drag force in there, obviously, otherwise this is, it's not a problem. I know I got the drag force in there. Okay, so the drag force is ML over T squared. Uh, you know, I want to get rid of mass. I got to have mass cancel out. Okay, where, I can't use him, he's gone, uh, he's gone. Mass, ma there, right, oh, there's mass right there. All right, I'm going to divide that by rho. Okay, mass is gone. Uh, problem now is I've got length to the fourth divided by time squared. Oh my gosh, length to the fourth divided by, oh, you know what, there, 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 there's, there's a velocity. I want to get rid of time squared. So I'll square velocity, I'll square velocity, let's see what that gives me. If I square velocity, length squared over time squared. Oh, good, time's gone now. I'm getting there. Now I say, gosh, I've still got, okay. Here's um, L to the fourth numerator divided by L squared, okay. L to the fourth divided by, uh, I got an L squared upstairs. Let's check this list out. I can't use E. Oh, look at that L by itself. D, I'm gonna square D. Uh, D squared, L squared. Let's see, D to the fourth. Uh, L to the fourth, up, oh, that's it, that's it, I found it. Pi three is F D over rho v squared d squared. I didn't use the pi theorem. But if you don't want to, if you don't think that clearly on a, on a timed exam, or if I tell you to use the pi theorem, you can use the pi theorem. So you want to, you want to be aware of both ways of doing it, you know. Um, the pi theorem structured, so you follow step A, follow step B, follow step C, out pop pi one, pi two, and pi three. If you want to fool around for a while like this, you can, but again, sometimes on a, on a timed exam under stress, your mind's not thinking super clear. So the bottom line is know both ways to do stuff like that, okay? All right, so then, got that guy. Um, the, uh, less, a, different, a different way. Sometimes we can look at the governing equation of some situation and from that determine what the important pi parameters are. So let's see, I think we've got chapter six here. Let me just go to the end, uh, no, not chapter six. Uh, oh, the, okay, there's a good reason why. Yeah, this is a different uh, chapter problem. Okay, here is a problem of um, two horizontal plates. So here are the two plates. The um, fluid, there's a fluid between it. The top plate is uh, given a velocity U, capital U. The uh, spacing of the plate is H, two plates, H. 
uh, the kinematic viscosity of the fluid, properties like fluid, so kinematic viscosity nu. And we, you may have looked at this in fluids one course, and the bottom plate is fixed. And the equation that describes this, it's a variation of the Navier-Stokes equation. And Y is measured here, vertically up. And we're going to normalize the differential equation. So sometimes if we have the differential equation, we might be able to find out what the important pi parameters are for, for a particular problem. But it's not easy. So here's what we want to do. Okay, there's our problem. Let's put it up here now. So I want this equation to be in dimensionless variables. I don't want velocity u. I want a dimensionless velocity. I don't want a dimension y. I want a dimensionless distance y. I don't want a time t. I want a dimensionless time t. Let me sure it was h. Yeah. OK. So I'm going to take that equation, and I'm going to multiply and divide the left-hand side by capital U. Multiply, divide by capital U. And that's equal new. And I'm going to uh, take this guy over here, which is also U, and multiply and divide by capital U. OK d squared u dy squared. I'm going to bring this u inside the partial sign. I'm allowed to do that because that u is constant. So I have u partial of little u with respect to big U d time equal nu. I'm going to bring that little u under the partial sign, because it's a constant, I can do that legally. And that's going to be u times a partial squared u over big U dy squared. OK. Big U, big U, gone. I'm getting there. I now have a dimensionless u. Sometimes they call the dimensionless u, u star. Little u over big U, dimensionless. OK. We're trying to make every variable in that equation dimensionless. Say, OK, now, um, that y right there, I'll do this right here, du star d time equal nu d squared u star dy squared. That y, I could get rid of that y and make it dimensionless. Uh, I'm going to make something like y star. Let me see, what can I divide y by to make it dimensionless? Look at the picture, of course. Oh, yeah, h. So I'm going to call dimensionless y, y over h. So I want to make that y over h. OK, so what I'm going to do is multiply by uh, h squared and divide by h squared. OK, I'll bring that h squared numerator down here. So that's new over h squared, 
second partial u star with respect to y over h squared, which is equal to do over h squared times second partial u star divided by second by y star uh, squared. Got it. Okay, um, I'm getting there. The velocity is now dimensionless. The distance y is now dimensionless. What's left? Oh, that time right there. I gotta find something which has time in it. Let me see now. This is distance per time, and that's distance. So if I take h over u, this would be distance, L. This would be L over time. Oh yeah, that's time. Okay, I got it now. I need, I need that. That's my dimensionless time, H over U. Okay, my dimensionless time. So, I want, I want this to be t over t star. So that's u over h. So I multiply this guy by u over h, and I take that times h over u. I didn't change anything. But now, I put that guy down here. So now I've got my uh, h over u. This guy here is time, okay, time. So flip him downstairs there. Uh, that should be u over h, pardon me. u over h. Partial this, partial of time divided by h over u. That guy now is, is going to be uh, my t prime. Uh, that should be, pardon me, that uh, the t prime, this is already in that, so it's divided by t, okay? Yeah, t prime. This is uh, feet, this is uh, per second, so the time, this is, in, this is in time right here. I want to cancel out, so t star is t over that. Time, time, cancel, cancel, got it. Okay, so T star is little t over that guy. There he is, little t over that guy. So, okay, we got partial U star with respect to T star equal, um, we have U here, we have nu here, we have H here, second partial U star with respect to Y star squared. Uh, this, this U goes downstairs, pardon me. So, this is our dimensionless governing partial differential equation, the dimensionless form. Here's the one which is not dimensionless. So, what's the so what? Well, the so what now is this thing is all dimensionless. This guy here is dimensionless also. So he must be an important pi parameter. Oh, yeah, he is. So our important pi parameter is nu over h times u. So sometimes by non-dimensionalizing the basic equation, starting with the equation in this form with dimensions, non-dimensionalizing it, end up down here, out pops an important dimensionless parameter. So sometimes that's how we discover what the important
dimensionless parameters are by non-dimensionalizing the governing equation. Okay, good stopping point. We'll continue on then on Wednesday, so we'll see you on Wednesday.